Hey guys, Joe Pye here at Advanced Innovations. Welcome back. As a courtesy to all the guys out there that purchased the uh, alignment pins, this guy right here, I'm going to show you a couple of different ways to use this and some of the features of it. It is officially five minutes to five, my time, Texas, and we're just going to run this real time and see how fast we can get this part done for you. So to align a rotary table, spindle to the center of the table, track it with your indicator, make sure it's good. To double check the bore to the table itself, mount your indicator to the table now, unlock the wheel so that this free spins, you can move it by hand, and track the spindle itself. If the center of your table is out to the rotation feature of the table, when you indicate it, you've already got an error that you're not going to be able to get past and you're going to wonder where it came from. So put a magnetic base on your table, track the spindle as well, just to double check the bore, see what kind of uh, relationship there is. All right, that being said, the rotary table is securely mounted to the table, and I have a fence on my rotary table that is indicated true in line with the x-axis. That just helps establish what's going on and a little bit easier for uh, future setups. Let me mount this to a tripod, and we will show you exactly how fast you can make a feature with this new little alignment pin. works pretty good. Hold on. Okay, first thing I'm going to do is set the pin up in the collar. So three quarter inch collar. Now this particular pin has multiple faces. The outside and the left and right side are 500 from center and the flat in the center is right on center. So however you decide to use it, bear in mind that you have three reference surfaces that are 500 away and one that's spot on. My part is approximately an inch and a half thick, so I'm going to move this. I want the center of rotation three quarters of an inch in from the part edge, so I get a good clean edge on the part. You'll see what I'm talking about here in a second. I'm going to make a dog bone out of this piece, like a chain link. See how fast we can do it. I'm going to go to the digital readout. I am going to move my table 750 that way. All right, 750. Let's mount the vise. Now, before I screw the vise down, I'm going to move the alignment pin down into the table and lock it off. And now I'm going to squeeze the pin. I'm just going to use a couple of random parallels. Sorry if I'm blocking out the view. Let me see how fast I can do this. All right, now I know that this reference surface here is three quarters of an inch in from the rotation point on the table. It will still move, so I'm going to use an adjustable parallel against my hard stop, and I'm going to orient the vise itself. Adjustable parallels. Squeeze them, they get taller. Unlock them, they get shorter. Now parallel with the back. I'll drop my clamp on the vise. Tighten it down. Come on. There we go. Now at this point in time, you have a couple options. You want the end of the part to be three quarters of an inch in as well so that you have a nice full radius on the end of the part. With the spindle free to rotate like it is. Let's bring it down so you can see it. With the spindle free to rotate like it is, I'm going to use the side that's right on center as a hard stop and I'm going to move my part up against it like a bumper and I'm going to lock it down. I'm going to get it close to where I want it to be. I'm going to return the table back to the zero just so that the 
plug is in the middle. Close enough is good enough. Now I'm going to move the whole assembly towards me, 750. All right, 750 it is. This is saw cut on the end, so it's going to be a little ratty, but it's 5 o'clock and I feel like going home. So I'm going to bring it down within the boundary of the height of the part. I'm going to move the part in and squeeze it so that the spindle is no longer spinning. And I'm going to lock it down. Okay, now what I've effectively just done is I've put the center of this rotational feature over the center of the rotary table, and it's that fast. Going to get up off the port, secure the vise again. All right, let's make a cut and see what we get. Just for yucks here guys, I'm going to make a part that looks exactly like a chain link. And I'm going to use the full length of the block just for demonstration purposes. I'm going to return the X and Y axis to zero. Make sure the table's locked. Make sure the table's locked. Everything X and Y is locked. Part is locked. Now when I come down with this half inch end mill, it's going to give me a half inch spot face right there. Okay, mission accomplished. I like the climb cut, so I am going to begin my cut on this side. I'm going to move 750 because of the radius, and I'm going to take half the cutter, which is 250. So effectively I'm moving my x-axis table one inch to the right. give it 10 for cleanup. So I am one inch ten thou from the center. On the X, the Y is still on zero. I'm going to go 20 degrees, 25 degrees beyond 180 both ways just to give it the neck down link effect. That's 25. That's not enough, let's go 40.
Let's take the camera off here for one second. Get close up. All right, so there you go. Neck down, hole in the center, tangent radiuses. Let's set it up for the other side, see how fast that happens. I know that my stopper rail was in the back before, so I'm just visually going to crank it around real quick until it is in the back. Just out of habit, I always zero my dials clockwise, so I'm going to come back around to zero. everything down, take the cutter out. This is a very superficial cut just for demonstration purposes. You go as deep as you need it to naturally. I'm going to move it 750. Move the table 750. This way. Back within the joints. Head down to the stop. Squeeze it. Lock it off. Real time, 12 minutes so far. Twelve minutes because I got a cold beer waiting for me and I want to go get it. Okay, let's move everything back to zero. So we are over the center of rotation. Put the other hole for the link feature in. Start at 40 degrees in. Both ends of the link cut are complete. This is when we re-register the table and the rotary table true to the same crank movements. Returning the stopper rail to the rear where we started. And I'm going to eyeball these guys. I do not have the step coordinates to the centers of these. Only because I wanted to do this really quick. So this is when you bring the cutter down. See if we can find.
find those pockets and knock them out. This is strictly XY moves with the mill table. The rotary table is locked. Take this piece out. Show you what we got. All right, there's the port. This is 18 minutes real time. It could be deeper. And if you had the X Y moves for the tangent points for these centers right here, you could make that a whole lot cleaner. But I think you see the advantages of having one of these guys. You can use this flat face here as a registration face for your part. You can squeeze it in the vise jaw and move the entire vise before you clamp it down. And if you wanted to somehow incorporate the 500 that's given on the part, because it's 500 this way, and it is 500 each way from center left and right. So if you want to use gauge blocks or whatever, you do have the option. The flat face will probably see most of the use, and you can see the benefit. That was lightning quick, and if you had to do that any other way, it would probably be a real pain in the neck. So I hope that helps. If you guys that have bought these already have any other questions, feel free to post them in the comment line. And if you've already used it, I would love to hear how it worked for you as well. Thanks for watching.